So Trump has just won his second term. Whether you agree with it, support it, deny it, it doesn't really matter. His policies are going to be impacting the Bay Area real estate market. So the question is, what can you expect at least over the next year when it comes to President Trump coming back into power based off of his policies? You may have already seen that the stock market, the treasury yields, Bitcoin all went up significantly, even already leading to this result because they, all of those markets have already predicted that President Trump would have already won. And because he won by a landslide, the markets just absolutely roared. You can see today at the day of this recording, which is the day after the election, you can see the Dow went up over 1,200 points. So what does this mean? And why are all these investors so bullish when it comes to Donald Trump winning? I'm going to be going over this video a little bit of his policies. I'm also going to be sharing how they may impact the Bay Area real estate market. And then I'd love to hear from you. Leave in the comments below with what you think will happen and if this will entice you and motivate you to be making a move to either buy or sell sooner or later. So why did investors absolutely cheer on this? I would say a few things. One, it was a decisive and clean sweep, right? They didn't have to wait for days, weeks of any battleground states. It was very decisive very early on. And investors generally like that. They don't like where, it, oh, it could be one way or another. They hate those aspects of having unknowns. I mean, think about what happened with Gore and Bush and just how disaster of a stock market was of that waiting period. So that's number one. Number two, they're also cheering because Donald Trump, whether you like his him personally or not, his policies are more about pro-growth. And so because they're more pro-growth, think about it, right? Generally, they're more pro-growth because he's going to be reducing further taxes, there's going to be additional things like you've been hearing it, no tax on tip, maybe even loan interest depreciation when it comes to auto loans, right? These are all pro growth things. If you think about it too, his previous tax plan that expires in 2025, he'll likely renew it and do something different on that too. So these are our pro growth things. Now, there's also a lot of things that are going to be quite frankly, very inflationary. That's one of them. The other thing that's inflationary is going to be tariffs, right? He's going to be doing more tariffs than before. Now he also knows the system better because he went through that. He is going to be going through tariffs. It's going to be inflationary because if goods are more expensive now here, you're going to be paying more, right? So that's the inflationary thing. Now, the other thing that he's going to be trying to do that's going to be deflationary will be two things, right? He's going to have Elon Musk that will be going in and the Department of Government Efficiency, Doge, to be able to cut a lot, but it's not going to be instant, right? Best case, it's going to take years for this to unfold. And as aggressive as Elon is, especially slashing Twitter by 80%, he's not going to be able to do that kind of extreme, nor does he need to. But at the same time, think about this. Unemployment is at near record lows. So if there is a time it makes sense to do this now, because those people can hopefully get into the private sector and be more productive than how this is being done. So he's going to try to find trillions of dollars to be able to cut there. The other thing that's inflationary is going to be regulatory aspects. So that's going to be regulatory on energy, right? So he's all about drill, baby, drill, go through coals. These are the things that are needed to power and to lower the cost of energy, which is quite frankly, one of the biggest drivers of inflation, which is energy or fuel costs. So we'll see how quickly that can be run and what can be done there. He's also going to be pushing not necessarily housing tax credits, but removing some regulations so that we can build more housing. So we will see what happens. As you saw before, he created these different things called opportunity zones. I don't know how really productive that has been versus what else can be done, but we will see what happens. I'm a little skeptical on that, especially here in the Bay Area, because there's not that much land to be done. However, there is an interesting proposition that could be really fascinating if it can be passed is can the state and the federal government actually release state or federal land to then be built for things. So for example, if you think about the Bay Area, look at the west of 280. All of those are protected land. And outside of a few very select cities, you got like Woodside, Portola Valley, these very small cities relative to that whole giant area. There's nothing really going on on that side. So the question is maybe can there one day be something that opens that up? Now, obviously, environmentalists will say, heck no, you're going to remove all these trees. You're going to do different things like this. But if you're going to be, you can't cry on that and cry on the, the lack of affordable housing at the same time or the lack of housing at the same time. So if something can be done of something like that, right, over time, naturally, we're going to have higher density requirements or higher density zoning that is going to be in popular areas. But that's really only going to be condos. You really need to find real big plots of land that are not that far. 
And that's one of the very few areas, if you think about it, that is just really, really, really valuable. And that is expensive land too, right? Because think about those houses there. They're, I mean, they're not going to be affordable housing by any means there, but they're going to be like a lot of housing that which could then provide less pressure on the medium to higher end housing, like the two, three, four million dollar housing that can certainly provide relief there, which there isn't a whole lot at this point. And it could generate a lot more tax revenue, right? So these are all the things that he has planned. These are all the things that it's, it's expressly clear. Obviously, how long will it actually take to unfold will be a different question. But you can see the stock market is at all-time record highs. The treasury yields have gone up a lot. So my prediction is this, as a, as a general of what we can expect, at least for the first year, is because the markets are up, I think assets are going to be up because people don't want to really have their money in something like a treasury yield when nobody wants to buy that when there's all these inflationary things. So in my opinion, I think... Now, there's not financial advice, but assets will likely go up, which means real estate will typically go up because of this, especially where the stock market continues to roar. Generally, when the stock market roars, the NASDAQ, which is mostly tech companies, also do really well. right? So we're going to likely see that. So you're probably going to see likely even a bigger increase. And I think we're going to see an earlier increase because there's a lot of people that waited until the election results to then decide what to do. So I think we're going to have an earlier buying season and selling season. My guess is February is already going to start uh, seeing activity, you can bookmark this, reframe this, show this at a later time, as long as nothing drastically happens. So I think that's going to be an occurrence. Number two, I don't think rates are going to get any better. I think the rates are actually going to be very sticky at the levels they are at right now, which are in the, for a kind of conforming loan, kind of in the high sixes or low sevens. And or when it comes to uh, jumbo loans, which are for the more expensive ones, I think you're probably going to be in the low sixes. I don't think that's going to be drastically any better. As you can see with all these different things of pumping more money, inflationary, tax spending, tax reduction, I don't think you're going to be seeing much of a reduction in that at all. I think the economy is going to be ripping and roaring, which means what's the point of lowering these things? But either way, there's going to be a lot of moving parts. Generally, if you didn't know, most of the time, I think it was like eight out of the last nine elections or something like that, the economy goes up. Also, home prices typically go up because people kind of wait and see, especially this time, it's been pretty decisive. Like the markets already knew who was gonna win. You can look at poly market to see for yourself of the spread over time. But at the same time, it's been a decisive win. Trump has been a lot more pro-growth. And so because of these things, then uh, I think this is gonna be all catalyst. If you agree, disagree, or I wanna hear your sentiments, leave in the comments below. If you wanna buy, sell, or invest right now, or go over a game plan right now to take advantage of the winter market, or plan for spring 2025, I would love to help you and be your real estate resource of choice. My contact details are below, 408-547-4590. Have a safe holidays. See you next time.